Weed management is one of the greatest challenges facing organic growers, especially in intensive small-scale production blocks. If weeds get out of control in a system like this, your profits will be lowered due to the cost of labor to remove the weeds. If weeds are allowed to go to seed, it will greatly increase the weed seed bank and create more weeds in the future. And competition from weeds can reduce your crop yields. Timing is the key to weed management. The timing of planting, irrigation, and cultivation. And most importantly, to remove weeds while they are just sprouting and still in the thread stage. We're going to go through a series of proven techniques that will clearly show best practices for weed management in a small-scale organic production system. Hi, I'm Daryl Wong. I'm one of the staff here at the UCSC Farm and Garden. And today we're going to do a demonstration of weed management in an organic uh, mixed vegetable block. Uh, this is a system that we've developed here at the UCSC Farm, but that is applicable to many other vegetable row crop operations. So here we are in the field. Uh, and one of the key components of our system here for weed management is that we establish our crops, um, both transplanted uh, and direct sown, overhead with irrigation pipe, and then transition to drip about 10 to 14 days later. When we water this block, uh, it went in on a Thursday, and we'll call that day zero. Um, when these crops were both sown and transplanted, we watered an inch overhead. Four days later, on Monday, we then came back through and watered uh, a half an inch. Um, three days later, on a, again a Thursday, which would be day seven, we did another half an inch. And now here it's Monday, which would technically be day 11, um, and we're pretty well set up for our cultivation. We have a nice flush of weeds that you can see in the furrows here, a little bit on the bed tops, um, as well as you can see that these plants are clearly established. They have grabbed the soil and have really taken root. The key component here in that type of irrigation scheduling, so two inches over almost two weeks, um, is that we're not watering too much is really what we're, what we're working towards. Uh, and that serves a couple of different uh, uh, ends. One, with more watering, if we were to give this soil more water, we could actually uh, flush more weeds, so there could be higher weed pressure on the top. Second is if we watered more frequently, um, we could also see there's a slight de degree of crusting on this surface, but it's pretty minimal such that it breaks up very easily. With more watering overhead, we could have uh, heavier crusting. The other thing, obviously, is that we just want to optimize plant growth, so really making sure that it doesn't have too much water in the soil um, so the roots can really extend. Uh, and then lastly, the most important thing is that we're trying to stretch these irrigations out so that come day 11, when we're early enough in the crop cycle and the weeds are just the right size, um, the moisture is just right for us to get in with the tractor and cultivate. So I'll go ahead and do a quick little dig so that we can see what that moisture looks like. And again, as I as I take this trowel up, you can see there's still some good moisture in the soil, but there's definitely no clumping happening in my hands. And anything that I work with the tractor here is just going to break apart very, very easily. So here we're going to start with our um, bed top uh, hula hoeing of this field. So in our system, our tractor cultivator uh, will work uh, the edge of one bed all the way through the furrow and up to the edge of the other bed. And we'll demo that in just a second. But the first step in this process um, is to take care of the weeds on just the surface. So uh, what we really want to emphasize here is that these weeds are at just the right stage for weeding. And they're almost to the point where you, you're just starting to see them. The important thing here is that we get so much more um, weed kill for our effort uh, when the weeds are this size versus when they've gotten a little bit larger. So for our timing of weeding, you can see that at this stage, which most of the weeds are at in the field right now, is really ideal. So just the die cuts are out, not any of the true leaves on that weed, and you see how weak that root system is. If we had let the weeds in this field get to this stage, right, which are still relatively small compared to the crop, but you see just how robust this root system is um, that we would really have to make sure we remove that root system to actually kill the weed. So hula hoeing at this stage is going to be much, much more effective, uh, much more efficient, um, which is why we want to do it again in that 10 to 14 day window after the crop's planted. 
So when we actually hoe the beds, um, I'm gonna demonstrate two different methods. Um, the first one will be for a situation like this where there's not a lot of weeds on the weed surface. So we can do a slightly looser job of hoeing um, and be a little bit faster and more efficient with it. So what that's gonna look like is basically three passes. Um, the one thing I wanna maintain is that my hula hose stays in the soil most of the time um, so that I'm not lifting it up and putting it back in again. So this three pass system would work where I'll start in and work in towards the plant, come out and then work in. So I'm working in row as well as next to the plant on just three passes. So a single pass down the center. And again, you can see I'm not killing every single weed in this field, but I am doing probably a good enough job given the weed pressure. Now, if you look at these weeds, they've all been undercut just enough so that they'll, they'll uh, die and desiccate um, in the sun today. If we were to water this field overhead, as soon as I finish this weeding, there's a good chance that a lot of these weeds would just re-root again. So we wanna make sure we give this a chance to die down. Now, the second method of hoeing, which would be a little bit more intensive, and again, this you would use in a situation where maybe you moved into a new field um, and the weed pressure is a little bit more like a carpet on the soil. You can be a little more systematic in terms of doing one hoeing pass down the center, down the side. And again, you see how close I'm coming to each plant. Then you do one pass on the other side of the plant. Again, very, very close. And then to the other row, very, very close. And then to the last side, very, very close. And the last step in this process is actually to come through and just take care of all those weeds in row. Now again, you can imagine how much more time that would take, but in a situation where you have a lot of weeds, uh, doing that little bit of extra work at this stage in the weed growth, at this stage in the crop cycle, is really gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money down the road. I showed you a quick demo of the two patterns, but I also want to show how uh, efficient that can be when you really start walking the whole row and doing it uh, in a system. Oftentimes, what you'll see in a field is folks that are doing hoeing kind of like this. And again, they're getting a bit of the soil surface, but you imagine how long that could take. So again, for... Um, when we're working a whole field like this, and again, I'll do the three pass system here. Really, this is just limited by how fast I can walk. And I would go down the whole, the whole bed like that. Same thing when I come back. Then on the return, And that's much, much quicker than, again, kind of working in place. Now in the same way, if I was gonna do a, the more intensive system, it would be a similar working down one side and coming back. Working close on this side. <coughs> and then working back. So again, the key here is that, especially for these side passes, it's about as quick as I can walk. When I come back through to do the passes in row, now that I've really broken up all of this little crusting on the surface, I hold my hoe very loosely so that this pass actually goes much, much quicker and I'm almost just raking the soil. So once we finished our bed top hoeing, the next step in our process is to use our three bar cultivator uh, that runs behind the tractor. And this would be the basic cultivation system that any row crop operation should have. The first thing to take note of is that in our system here, our tractor tires are set up so that they're 72 inches 
on center, which would mean from center of one tractor tire to the center of the other tractor tire. So when we go to set up our sweeps on the back, again, you see there's three sweeps. This tractor would work over two beds. The distance from one sweep to the next is 36 inches. And then all the way to the end, there's our 72. So we know that these are measured exactly right so that they're working right in the center of those furrows. The other important thing to work with um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're setting up your three bar cultivator is to make sure that the, tract that the, the cultivator is oriented um, left and right, more or less centered to the tractor. So when you stand behind and you're looking through to the tires, again, you want to see that sweep lined up just about dead center on one tire and dead center on the other. If you do happen to have a centered PTO shaft, um, or even you can use your top link here, make sure your center sweep is lined up directly in that plane. So the key components um, of this uh, cultivation setup, this three bar cultivation setup, um, is sweeps, which run on the back. And sweeps are just made to clear out the furrows. They have the space um, on the sweep so that soil can flow back in so that you're not actually moving soil left to right. It more is just digging out the furrows and letting the soil flow back through. The second is a furrow chisel. And these chisels, there's two of them on this cultivator um, on one side and then two on the other side. And they only run behind the tires. So in the furrows where we're driving our tires, um, these little chisels are very important to break up the additional compaction that the tractor causes. It may not seem important right away. You might be able to get away with it, um, get away with actually cultivating the weeds out with just the sweep. But for other tractor operations down the row um, or in sequence, um, it's really important that you break up that compaction so that all the implements can work smoothly after um, uh, at later stages in the crop's growth. So for a closer up view, I have a chisel right here. And again, you see it's a standard shank with a bevel towards the front. Um, this bevel really helps uh, to cut through any trash um, that would be left in the field to move it either side so it doesn't wrap around this shank. And again, you see kind of the wide tip um, that helps again break up that compacted furrow. The last piece of this um, is a side knife here. Um, and these side knives are meant to work just the sides of the beds. I have one here so you can take a closer look. And these have both left and right hands um, so this in working would work this direction in the soil and carve out just the shape of that bed. So from this perspective, with the implement lined up directly behind the tractor, you can really see the importance of, uh, of spacing of these different shanks on the cultivator. So first you'll notice that the sweep at the back here is lined up just about dead center with the tire uh, of the tractor. So that's working exactly in line. When you look at the chisels, the furrow chisels, one here and one closer to the wheel, you see that they're offset from the sweep so that one is working just to the left of the sweep and one is working just to the right. And again, that allows for a wider working space um, so that those chisels are really working that furrow um, to the maximum width. What's also important to notice uh, in the setup of this cultivator is that the chisel point is actually a good two or three inches deeper than the sweep point. And that really allows these chisels to do their work in breaking up the furrow compaction and then the sweep to just move that light soil on top. Lastly, when you look at the side knife, you can see that it works just on the, on the inside to the left of that sweep with the point of this sweep being at just about the same plane as the sweep at the back. Um, and that's gonna make sure that we're maintaining a nice, um, even bed, um, even after we slice off the side of it. We're gonna bring the tractor uh, and the cultivators into the field. It's important to remember where the beds were shaped because that's the compaction that we're trying to mitigate. So because these two beds were shaped together, which means that I'm in the center furrow here 
and this was a tractor tire furrow, and this was a tractor tire furrow. When I shaped the beds, then when we come back through and cultivate, we wanna make sure that we drive on the same pattern. So that the tractor tires are here, and those furrow chisels are really breaking up that compaction, and then the other tires there, again, doing the same thing. I wouldn't wanna offset this um, so that the tractor tires are running in this furrow, uh, so that I can keep all the compaction in one zone, as well as use those chisels to break it up. And you can see here that there's a little less compaction in this furrow already compared to what's happening here. So here I am again in the same bed, um, uh, in the same beds, the same furrow. Again, the tractor tire furrow here and the tractor tire furrow here, but now they've been cultivated and you can see just how much looser that soil is after cultivation, whether it's the tractor tire furrow or the non-tractor tire furrow. And the really important thing here is that while the weeds have definitely been taken care of, what we're doing is loosening up that ground so that future work with the tractor uh, later on in the crop's life, or even at the end of the crop's life, those implements are going to be able to move through this soil so much more easily uh, now that that compaction is loosened up. So we've hoed our bed tops, we've cultivated our furrows out, and the next step in our system is now to lay drip on top of these beds and transition all the watering to drip tape. What that'll help us do is both save water, um, we won't re-wet the furrows to germinate more weeds in there. And if we've done our job right today, uh, this will be the last weeding that these crops will really need to see. Mm -hmm.